Hi friends, it's Ashley from Ashley's Paper Heart and welcome to my desk. I thought today we could set up my goodies that I got from the California Pen Show and also do some, I guess, like journaling, memory keeping, just sticking some stuff that I, um, like stickers and stuff that I got from there into this traveler's notebook insert. This is the one that I showed in my haul where I got some of the stamps that they had out at the Traveler's Company pop-up. So I wanted to maybe decorate the cover. I almost want to put like, this actually was the part of the bag that they gave me from shopping at the, the booth. But I don't feel like it's going to fit nicely on here. I don't know. Maybe we won't decorate the cover. Maybe we'll, or maybe we'll do stickers or something on the cover. I don't feel like fussing <laughs> with it too much, like too intensely. And I'm not even sure like what outside of putting like the ephemera that I picked up from the the pen show in here, what I'm going to use it for. I may end up just using it like I use my other traveler's notebook insert where I'm doing like some more personal journaling, but also gluing in lots of ephemera in there. So it's like barely too big. I feel like I could cut it down, but then it's just gonna, I don't know. So how are you guys doing? How are... Are you guys keeping up with your journals? Are you changing them? Are you happy with the decisions you made for 2023? I feel like um, for the most part, I've been able to stick with my journaling routine of, I think I have three books that I write in daily. Um, I don't know if long-term I'll be able to maintain that, but it's fun right now. And I think that's what matters. I think sometimes we just like in the I'm, I see it more in the planner community where they're looking for planner piece but I feel like there's things that are going to work for us in the moment depending on the season we are in our life and we shouldn't give ourselves a hard time if we need to change it so I'm also going to put this in this cover eventually we'll get there okay let's start sticking stuff in before I get distracted I still don't know what I want to put on the cover. I don't know. Maybe I'll start putting stickers on there and see if that feels good. This sticker is so cute. This was one of the booths that I was talking about. They are actually a local, to me, stationery store that I didn't even know that was nearby. Nearby as in like within an hour's drive. Um, they're near the college campus UCLA. And I think I will have to go down there and check them out. I'm hoping... I know I've talked about this for my master's program. UCLA is one of the schools that I want to apply to. And so, you know, <laughs> if I happen to get into grad school there, maybe I'll have an excuse to like be at their stationery store more frequently. Not that I need that, but you know, it's kind of the thought process, right? It's cute. So I wanted to, I think I wanted to stick some of these Ace Hotel stickers on here. I have a bad habit of, specifically with Traveler's Notebook or Traveler's Company stickers, I buy them and then I treat them like they're super precious and then I never use them. So let's see, I have like the stickers that came with the 2023 uh, planner diary, whatever you want to call it, that I just, I haven't even opened these yet. I typically don't use a lot of these kinds of stickers in my planning, but maybe I'll put, maybe I'll put one of these stickers on the front of this. And the same with like the diner um, set that I bought. I still have, I think I may have used like one or two of the stickers that came with the set. It's just when you get like these beautiful like letterpress and gilded looking stickers, it's really hard to use them. 
I don't know if anyone else is like that. I'm really trying hard this year to not be incredibly precious with my stuff, but it's definitely a, it's a struggle. And I'm not sure why I'm like that. Maybe I think it has to do with something where these companies really like push scarcity. So when you're like done using something and then it's, what if you want another, what if you want that same sticker and you can't get it? I don't know. So like the whole scarcity um, movement sucks. I hate that so much. So I think let's do maybe like this and then I thought since it's the the um, California Pen Show that putting the Los Angeles Ace Hotel sticker would be nice. There we go. And I don't have any like real rhyme or reason. I just wanted to feel kind of fun, flowy, random. Maybe I'll put, I don't wanna do another circle. I wonder if I could just put this like up in the corner, kind of. That's cute. <clears throat> so yeah, I do have quite a few videos in mind that I want to film over the next week. I just got over being sick. We got... I don't know like my immune system is like taking a beating this month I had like a month where I wasn't sick almost at all and then the kids brought home stuff again so I know like that stomach flu thing is going around well pretty sure we got it and that sucked that was like four or five days of misery um and then literally I was well for about 12 hours oops <laughs> is like oh, I can't get to go back in um this is like not cooperating okay so I was 12 I was 12 I was well for about 12 hours and then I got sick again with respiratory garbage and that's kind of what you hear in my voice right now I'm a little hoarse but I'm coming out the other side of it and I'm ready to not be sick I feel like there's been so much illness going around in school for my kids that it's just been, they bring home something new every week. And it kind of sucks. It's annoying, to say the least. Hmm. Maybe I should have started trying to do this and like wrapping it around. Oh well, that is not going to happen now. Okay. Let's see. So I was going to cover up this, um, <laughs> this oopsie right here. And this is a piece of a bag that um, came from their booth. I'm shopping with them. Do you guys have journals where you kind of like glue things in or they call them more like glue books? Is that what people call them? I just call it like my ephemera catch-all not like the the fake ephemera that we buy to like do decor but real ephemera from our lives I know I don't know if it's just me or a lot of people but I love packaging I think a lot of it has to do with design stuff and because that's my my field that I work in so I always appreciate decent packaging and like logos and typography and and stuff like that. So whenever I can like get those kind of bits and bobs from packaging, I have a lot of fun doing that. So I don't want to put anything on. I don't think I want to put in anything on these two pages. I just think I want to let them be what they are. But I think, I don't know, maybe I'll put this, because it's all Traveler's Notebook related, I could put it here. 
I feel like sticking it there, it's just not going to work. It's going to get caught in the, I don't know. Still deciding. I think I might just like glue it down sideways like that. <clears throat> and that's a straight, I know I didn't cut it like perfectly straight, but I did cut it straight enough. <laughs> We're gonna do glue tape. So, a little bit of a story time that I have. <laughs> I bought a pen from Yuseka Stationery, a Le Bon pen. It's actually my first Le Bon. And when I opened it up, the nib in it was just like jacked up. And that's not their fault. It must have come to them that way or or something. So I'm not blaming them. So I was supposed to mail it back to Lebon, it's a US like pen uh, repair place, which isn't actually that far from LA, they're, they're nearby. So I sent it out last week and I got it, my package sent back to me saying it was insufficient address. So like I've been trying, I contacted them yesterday via email to see if there's like a suite number to the place where I'm supposed to mail this and I still haven't heard anything back and I'm getting a little bit annoyed. Um, I really just want to be able to use the pen that I bought <laughs> and I'm getting slightly annoyed. So <laughs> there is that. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to stick this here. This is our wristband that we had to use to get into the show on Saturday. So yeah, I'm a little bit annoyed. Their customer service has been underwhelming so far. Maybe they'll make it up to me. But I guess the moral of the story is, is if you have an issue with one of their pens and you purchased it from a retailer, deal with the retailer. Don't deal with them directly because so far they haven't been the most responsive. Um, And the fact that the the address that I was given came directly from them just via email to the the retailer, like they didn't give me the correct address in the first place is annoying as well. So again, if you have to have anything like return wise with their pens, I would just go directly to the retailer because so far my customer service experience with them has not been great. And I'm really disappointed because the pen's beautiful and I'd really like to use it. I'm almost like getting to the point where I'm thinking about just trying to send it back to the retailer again. Um, I don't know. I'm going to give them the next couple days to respond to me before I try to just send it back to the retailer. So yeah. Have you guys ever had a weird like customer service experience? I don't think I'm going to put those in there, but... Um, and these are some like stickers. A lot of the booths had just random stickers and, um, with their branding that you could take. So these are all like vinyl stickers. And this is the Heinz sticker that I picked up. If I can get it off of here. It looks like I might have gotten something on there too. Um... It really does not want to let go. <laughs> but I was so excited to talk to them. I know I talked about that in the, the hall. I thought, I don't know. You support your home state. That's just kind of a thing. Texas is my home state. I grew up and lived there for over 30 years before moving to California. And while I love California... Texas has always got my heart. My family still lives there and my friends and it will always, always, always have my heart. So this is one of the, I guess, makers that they use for their resin pours. Um, I just thought it was a really cute sticker. Let me need to look at this company more. They had a booth and they have, of course, inks there. I just thought the um, 
The sticker was super cute. And these stickers like do not want to let go of the backing. There we go. I don't know this <laughs> this book may end up being like a, like I said where I kind of just like dump ephemera from my life in here so that's only a little bit but I don't feel like I need a whole lot else in here I might save this for something else so that's kind of where that is right now Let's open this up. I think this is the first, like, sorry for the noise, Traveler's Note or Traveler's Company wallet thing that I, I've purchased. I have another, I guess, wallet, travel wallet like this, but it's, um, it's Moterm and I, I haven't had this, although the Moterm one, Moterm one feels very similar for like half the price. I guess you're paying for the name at that point. I don't know. So typically what I do with these is go around the, uh, the book. And this was what I had my like personal traveler's notebook journal in before this cover. But then when I got the diner, I'd switched it out. And now this one's just been sitting kind of empty. Although I do want to use um, this notebook, this insert. I think it's Zoom. Yeah, Zoomkin. It was not a cheap insert. And I do want to use this. The paper seems really nice. I was thinking about, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for. I have an idea for a video. I think I'm going to do in the future, hopefully in the next month or so. I wanna pull out all of my blank notebooks and like sit down and really see how many notebooks I have and haven't used yet. I feel like there are times where I go to purchase something without knowing that I already have something like that in my stash that I could use. And so I want to get to a point where that's not the case anymore. Sorry if you hear an airplane. I'm gonna edit that out. There we go. Um, that's a nice little profile, right? That's cute. <laughs> um, something that I want to do more of this year is shop my stash. I've been really good about it with stickers and washi tapes. I have not bought any stickers. Well, I have bought some stickers. I take that back. I've bought like two sheets of stickers, but I have not bought any washi tape for probably close to six months now. I've been trying really hard to use what I have and to shop my stash. And I want that to be the case with notebooks too, because I know I have a bunch of notebooks like all over the place so I want to do a video to kind of like hold myself accountable and then hopefully do another video at the end of the year showing how many notebooks I actually used in my stash because then I also have like all the um half finished notebooks so that's kind of a thing too okay so I think that's all I wanted to do in here And I don't know if I'm going to write anything. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to maybe just write like California Pen Show or something somewhere. But then I have the... <laughs> then I have this. So it's like it's not like I really need a title. I've been like loving... So I know everyone loves these uh, Sailor Shikiori pens for the brush tip. But I've been really loving the fine tip for writing with... Um, the ink is just beautiful. <clears throat> it's like I don't want to like mess up. It's just so like clean and pretty just by itself. 
you know what? I'm not going to write anything on there. I'm just going to let it be and let it breathe. I don't need to like notate everything. I'm pretty sure I'll remember what all this is. And that'll give me time and space if I do use this later as like a personal journal kind of thing for my deeper thoughts, then I'll just not have too much going on in the front. So that's what I wanted to do with that. I thought maybe we could do, <coughs> excuse me, a like collage, one of these spreads in here, probably using this. And then my daughter, we got her some like little Valentines for to give out in class. So this is Super Pets one and she wrote her name on the back and gave it to me. So I guess this is my Valentine. And I'm trying not to stick as much stuff in my Hobonichi. So let's see. I will probably stick it in here. And I thought I could use this other armband in here. And then I can like tear this up a little bit and collage with it. So there we go. All about repurposing things instead of it just going into the garbage. So I have some videos coming up too. I wanna to do some more ink swatching, like collections of different brands that I have. I am planning on doing um, an ink swatching video of the Troublemaker inks that I got from the pen show, which I'm super excited about. They're very reminiscent of um, the Sailor, I guess they're Shikiori inks. I feel like I could find dupes. Like, I feel like there are certain combinations of like the different sheening properties and colorways that are just like universal across the board for the different brands. They just maybe make the formula a little bit different. But I feel like the color, the look of it is very similar. So I feel like I could do, you know, if you like Diamine Polar Glow, here are three inks that are very similar to that if you don't want to buy that one specifically. I know I have a few dupes for that, so. But I think that'd be a fun video to do. Let's see. Is this one going to get like all... Yeah, I have to tear it down. I definitely, I think I'm doing well with sticking to trying to get some videos out a week. Like I said in one of my earlier videos this year is that I don't want to commit to specific days or like number of videos a week it's just kind of like what I have time for I feel like that's what I did wrong the first time when I was like really throwing myself into YouTube I was being way too stringent on myself and treating it like like I was a company and I'm not a company I'm a person <laughs> And I don't have unlimited resources and I don't have unlimited time, but it is something I enjoy. It's something I want to grow. And I don't know. <laughs> if you're a content creator, then I'm sure you understand the over overworking yourself, over promising. Because at the end of the day, like, this is supposed to be fun, right? It's fun for the viewer, fun for the maker. And if it's not fun, then what's the point? So something I'm really excited about in the next, I think it starts next week. I signed up for a sketchbook 
class from a famous contemporary artist. Like, you know, when I say like artist, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about someone who is recognized in the art world. Like they have their work in galleries, they're in books, stuff like that. Very much in the, the gallery scene. And I'm so excited to take her class. I'm a little intimidated. I know her specific style is like hyper-realism. At least that's what I, when I look at it, I think hyper-realism, but it's, she's an artist that I admire. And I'm really excited to take this sketchbook boot camp class of sorts to really help jumpstart my art practice this year. While I have been doing little doodles and stuff in my journal and stuff, I want to really dig deep and do more art and work on my portfolio and get more of that stuff like going because that's really where my priority lies and something that I'm having to like come to terms with is that if something's important to me I can sit here and say <laughs> all day that it's important to me but if I'm not actively pursuing it then is it really that important to me? So something I'm trying to do more of is to, when I say something's important to me, is that I want to be true to myself that that's important instead of like stressing out whenever I don't follow through, i.e. working in my sketchbook. I say that's important to me, but then I don't do it. So this is hopefully going to help that. So I only glued half of this down. That way I can lift it up and see my daughter's signature. Um, let me see. I think I have, I think we'll do some tape on it too, just to keep the top part of it down. So yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about stuff like that right now. Like really trying to figure out what's important to me. Really leaning into what will make me happy in the long run and not doing everything for everyone else. I think the stuff with my job has really pushed me in that direction where I have to take control of my own happiness. I can't sit there and rely on someone else for my own happiness. And it only took me, you know, into my late thirties to realize it. Sometimes I wish I had like the energy and everything else of like how I was in my twenties. But the knowledge that I have now in my late 30s, because I feel like I'm a, I know myself better now than I ever did, but I don't have the energy or the time to pursue everything that I now want to pursue. So I have to be very strategic where I put my energies. Let me know if you can relate to that. I feel like a lot of us get to that point. I feel like in our 20s, you feel like you know everything. And then the older you get, the more you realize that you know nothing. <laughs> and that's not a bad place to be. Because I think when you realize that you don't know everything, you open your heart and your mind to learning things. And honestly, it's not really a bad place to be because I don't think it is. Speaking of ink swatches... So I got Robert Oster's Blood Moon. Excuse my really bad cursive handwriting with the Fude nib. It's like terrible and embarrassing. But what I wanted to show you is so this is like the little swatch card that came with it. And I guess it's like almost on some sort of like cotton paper. It's very like absorbent for the ink. As you can see, it is really pretty ink. It's a super dark red, although I'm not getting like that bluish silver stuff that I see on the top of the lid 
or like online when you're like looking at swatches that's not really showing up in my swatches this is Tomoe River paper so I don't know I do like the ink I feel like Robert Oster inks are like really good their packaging is understated I think they put probably most of their energy and time into making sure that their ink is amazing which is great I can get behind that let's see let's do a little collage over here I'm going to move this out of the way <laughs> throw it on my bed my dog's like what is going on I actually had some pretty productive like writing sessions in this journal I was really trying to figure out some stuff in my head I started therapy again it's been a while <laughs> But with all the stuff going on with work and how it was making me feel and I knew that it was time to do something different for my mental health. And it's been like, I don't know, it's been years since I've been in therapy. But I thought, why not give it a shot? I think I'm in the season of my life right now where it could be helpful. And just like everyone, we all have stuff that we carry, this baggage, these experiences that we've like internalized and, you know, we get to a point where it's like, it's not okay anymore in your head and you want to figure out why. I think that's kind of where I got. And so, yeah, <laughs> I'm back on that journey again. That was another thing that I promised myself this year is that I would really put some time in to making sure that I was good on the mental health front. I feel like there's a lot of time where we're just like chugging forward. How do we move forward? We move forward. We just keep going and it doesn't matter like if that's where we should be mentally. Like maybe we should stop and pause and, and kind of reflect for a moment. I feel like a lot of problems would be solved if <laughs> we all just like paused and reflected for a moment. I have like all these like little bits and bobs here that I've been meaning to use up. This is the classic -y, like desk box thing. <laughs> I don't know what the proper name for it is. It's just a little wooden box that I use to kind of do a little bit of stationary capsule so that I have something to look forward or look in there we go there's also like a writing class that I want to take too that's an online writing class but I'm not sure yet if I have the bandwidth to do that I'm really playing with the idea of trying to write. I feel like I write every day in my journal. I know writing in your journal is not the same as like writing fiction or nonfiction or whatever you're deciding to write. But I feel like I have some ideas. Nonfiction, not fiction. I'm not, I don't know if I could be a good storyteller. But I feel like I have some ideas as far as a book relating to kind of an insider's look at being in advertising that's been kind of like swirling around in my head and like all the deceptive practices and the way that advertisers get you to buy things and manipulate you and all the stuff the ways advertisers make you feel um less than so you will purchase what they're selling I know if I wrote a book like that or even like I'm playing around with the idea of like a podcast that I would basically be throwing a bomb in my career and saying don't hire me I mean maybe like the nonprofit space would hire me but I feel like commercial 
retail or anything like that that would be like the end of my career as far as that not sure I'm ready to like totally destroy my career yet. but I feel like it's an important I also feel like it's an important story I guess it's an important narrative to tell <clears throat> excuse me I'm still like getting over this cold Do you guys ever just really enjoy the collage aspect? I feel like sometimes the collage to me is just as rewarding as the um, the writing aspect. I think I'm gonna put that here. Hmm. Collage is like something that comes so naturally to me. I love playing with shapes and um, scale and all that. I mean, that's all like related to, to design. At the end of the day, it all just relates back, right? And then a part of me is like wondering if I'd want to do like an online class, like an art class, if I wanted to actually like run my own class and like trying to figure out well what could I teach what do I have a perspective on that I could make where where could I bring a unique perspective because I feel like the market for that kind of stuff is very saturated right now but I also feel like everyone who teaches something has their own way of teaching it and their own way of reaching people so why not right because maybe the way that I teach something might make it click in someone's head in a way that it hadn't before. I'm trying to tell myself that having those variety and perspective can really be valuable, especially when people are trying to learn stuff. And while I'm not a believer of when it comes to art, like teaching art, like to me, teaching like a step-by-step -step is not as helpful as giving concepts and then letting people run with that and creating their own their own thing from the concepts that you've taught them if that makes sense because i think especially when it comes to art when it's come to learning it is about making those connections yourself and that's a very personal journey that's not a step by step i mean yes i could sit here and say here's how to draw this lily but is that really going to help you in the long run? Because what if tomorrow you want to draw a sunflower? And all you know how to draw is the lily that I taught you how to do step by step. I feel like teaching those kind of like concept based things or fundamental skills are way more valuable than the step by step stuff that can be so prevalent. Maybe it's like instant gratification kind of thing. I don't know. Here we are getting all philosophical journaling collage and philosophy on learning. I don't know if you can hear that. My cuckoo clock in the background. During, over Christmas, I bought myself a cuckoo clock because it reminds me of my grandma. My grandma passed away right before my daughter was born, which is really sad. My grandma, I was, loved her. She really, I felt like she got me, especially when I was a teenager. She was like there for me when I was going through stuff and I just miss her. And I wish that she would have had the opportunity to meet my daughter and my son. But anyway, I bought the cuckoo clock because she had one in her house and I always wanted one. And it reminds me of her, so. <laughs> and my kids love it. They actually will stop what they're doing and just watch it, like, anytime it goes off. So that's fun, right? Let's see. Oh, this is a cute little stamp. Okay. 
Hopefully this isn't getting too long. Hopefully you're still here sticking around while I'm just like rambling about nothing in particular. I think like if you're really wanting to do like basic collage for a page or spread, you can't go wrong with doing the opposite corners. And you can't go wrong like having a cluster here and a cluster there and then calling it a day. It looks polished, it looks clean, and it's a really simple, um, it's a really simple layout that is really hard to mess up. So if you're ever like, how do I collage better? Just try collaging the corners first. Pick two corners across from each other, preferably, and try that. That'd be like my, my tip for starting. And I'd also pay attention to scale. So having large, medium, and small elements will help. So then it doesn't feel so weighted. It's always good to kind of read the balance of the page, I guess. Something else that I've done for the past couple of weeks that I'm actually really happy I did is I set a screen limit on myself for Instagram. So I can only be on Instagram an hour a day before the app shuts down. Now, obviously I can go in and I can turn it off, but I feel like there were times where I would just mindlessly scroll and not realize that I had been on Instagram for like an hour at one time. And then when I got like to the end of the week and I saw like when it was giving me my screen report for the week and all the, the things that I did on my phone for the week, that that was really um, eye-opening to see that I was spending so much time on there. And that's not where I want my time to go. That if, if I was thinking like, hmm, priority, where do I want to put my time and energies for the day? It, scrolling Instagram mindlessly is not something that pops up. And honestly, I feel like Instagram can really make you feel like shit about yourself. All this like aspirational stuff. Trust me, like when I, even when I post on there, you know, I make it look perfect, perfect. I, I give something that is not the real look of what my desk look, looks like in the moment. I mean, I may have like a clear spot and it may look really polished right in this like one little square. But the rest of my, my desk or my workstation could be a complete mess. So, I mean, just for anyone, take social media with a grain of salt. Social media is all about putting your best foot forward. It's about the fantasy of your your best self. <laughs> but outside of that, it's not real. And I think that's something that we can all, we all need reminders on sometimes. Social media is not real life. Real life is messy and, I don't know, fun. <laughs> not to say social media is not fun, but real life's messy. It has its its intricacies and stuff that just cannot be translated via a short, you know, form video format or a, an image, just a single image. We're so much more complicated as people than that. And I think when we start really... I don't know, trying to funnel ourselves down into this one place and making everything like fit into that. It just doesn't work out. And it makes everyone feel bad. <sighs> just know that I have a messy desk just like anyone else, even if it looks like partially cleaned. I am in by no means have a perfect life. 
One of my pen pals sent me these and I think they're so cute. They're just, I'm not typically like a hearts person, but it's Valentine's Day today, so why not, right? Okay. So there, I did three pages and you know what? Let's put a little like bluish green heart over here somewhere. I think it would fit good right here. If I can get it to go on straight. Oh, well, let's embrace the perfection, imperfection. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. In this journal, I will go back in later and, and write deep personal thoughts. And, and this is kind of where I use to, to work things out in my head. But I like having this little bits of decoration. It's just, even though maybe the subject matter that I'm writing about may not be super happy, having these like little moments of joy in the corners and stuff can be helpful. So that is what all we're doing today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys are still journaling. Are you keeping up with your, your journaling systems, your planner systems? Have you changed anything? Do you write in a traveler's notebook? Anyways, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.